Activate Beamtown Bullies. Bombshell. Activate it again. Bombshell. 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 This might be what you hear when the game ends, but what's actually going on behind the scenes? Welcome back to Better Know a Combo, brought to you by the Spike Feeders and Game Genic. This combo uses a legendary creature from the streets of New Capenna, the Beamtown Bullies. It's a 4 mana 4-4 four four with Vigilance and Haste that has one heck of an activated ability. Target opponent, whose turn it is, puts target non-legendary creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under their control. It gains Haste, goad it, at the beginning of the next end step, exile it. First of all, you can only activate this ability on an opponent's turn and you have to target the opponent whose turn it is. Once that's out of the way, you can pick a creature out of your graveyard and hand it to the opponent you targeted. I've seen a lot of people using this with Eater of Days and Leveler to take advantage of their devastating ETB effects, but today we're going to talk about a self-sustaining combo involving Bronze Bombshell. Bronze Bombshell is a four mana four one artifact creature construct that reads, when a player other than Bronze Bombshell's owner controls it, that player sacrifices it. If the player does, Bronze Bombshell deals seven damage to the player. This ability isn't an enter the battlefield ability. It's something called a state trigger. Whenever Bronze Bombshell is in play, it's constantly checking who controls it. The moment its controller is different than its owner, its ability triggers and goes on the stack. Once it triggers, it won't trigger again while the ability is on the stack. If the triggered ability leaves the stack and the creature is still on the battlefield under the control of a player other than its owner, the ability will immediately trigger again. This has some implications for how we can interact and prevent the combo, so keep this in mind for later. For the purposes of this combo, we'll also need a way to untap the Beamtown Bullies. You can use a number of things for this, but for our purposes today, we'll be using an equipped Thornbite Staff. So how does it work? Great question. We'll start with the Beamtown Bullies in play, equipped with Thornbite Staff and Bronze Bombshell in our graveyard. I'll activate Beamtown Bullies, targeting my opponent and the Bronze Bombshell. When the ability resolves, the Bombshell enters the battlefield under that opponent's control and triggers immediately. When the ability resolves, its controller sacrifices it and takes 7 damage. When it dies, it triggers Thornbite Staff's untap ability. Now the Bombshell is back in the graveyard, the Bullies are untapped, and I'm ready to repeat the loop until the opponent whose turn it is loses the game. When a player is eliminated in a multiplayer game, they auto yield priority until the end of their turn, and when play passes to the next player, I can repeat the loop targeting them until everyone's dead and I win the game. This sounds awesome, but how can people interact? Let's take a look at the combo and talk about the ways people can interact at the times they receive priority. With Beamtown Bullies in play, equipped with Thornbite Staff and Bronze Bombshell in the graveyard, I'll activate Bullies targeting my opponent and the Bombshell. At this point, you can remove either the Bullies or the Staff or fire off Graveyard Hate to remove the Bronze Bombshell from my graveyard. You can also counter the Bullies' activated ability to buy yourself another turn. Be careful though, because if I can kill any other creature on board, it'll trigger the Thornbite Staff so I can try again. Once the Bully's ability resolves, the Bombshell enters under my opponent's control and triggers its own ability. This is another opportunity to remove the Bullies or the Staff, or deal with the Bronze Bombshell in a more permanent way. Its ability will only deal 7 damage if it's actually sacrificed by the ability. So if you can exile, or phase it out, with the ability on the stack, you can stop the combo. When the Bombshell's ability resolves, it gets sacrificed and triggers Thornbite Staff. You've got one more opportunity here to stifle the untapped trigger, or remove any of the key pieces. Once that Thornbite trigger resolves, I've completed my first iteration of the loop, and I'm ready to go again. But what if you're not playing reactive spells like that? How can we shut them down? This ability requires players to sacrifice Bronze Bombshell. Whenever I think of Forced Sacrifice, my mind immediately goes to Sigarda, host of Herons. If you've got Sigarda in play though, it won't actually stop you from sacrificing the Bronze Bombshell. 
triggers on the stack are controlled by the controller of the permanent that generated them. You also can't use Better Noah Combo Staples Torpor Orb or Hushwing Griff because Bronze Bombshell's trigger is not an Enter the Battlefield ability. What does work though, is preventing creatures from going to the graveyard at all. Leyline of the Void or Rest in Peace will put in a ton of work making sure this combo never gets off the ground. Because this combo requires people to target you, you can also give yourself Hexproof using something like Solitary Confinement, Enduring Angel, or Leyline of Sanctity. Finally, if you're in black, Grave Pact, Butcher of Malakir, or Dictate of Erebos will put a cap on the number of times I can execute this loop. You'll still take seven each time I can pull it off, but if I lose one creature each time, eventually I'll have to sacrifice the Beamtown Bullies. That just about does it for this episode of Better Noah Combo. If you have a combo you'd like to see explained, make sure you let us know in the comments below, and we'll catch you next time.